Very special day today, boys. Long time listener. Oh, don't like that hat. Anyway, happy retirement <laughs> to Kevin Gray, long time listener, fan of the show. 38 years, hanging them up, retiring. Good luck with the terrible golf. Apparently, brutal golfer, you can enjoy some brutal golf. Okay, That's what shout I've been out. Told. Shout Kevin, out. happy retirement. Yes, happy retirement, man. You see, golf supplies so much wild stuff online, like stuff that goes viral with just brutal golf swings or guys snapping on golf courses. What about what I sent you today? I know, I saw it. The guy took his shirt off and started yelling like a lunatic on a muni. At a, a, at a nine and dine. Because yes. there was yeah. guys and ladies doing a nine and dine, and they're like, sir, that's our golf ball you took. Right. Shirt came off and flexing, and he wanted to go. Right. Hercules. I wanted that video to, to go a little bit further because I think the guy chirped him and said, you need to do more sit-up. Like, I, he chirped him <laughs> about his body on the way out, and, and they cut the video off right away because I kind of – I rewound that a few times because I that's the comment I would have been. Be like, put your tarp back on. You're embarrassing yourself right. before we stuff you in a garbage can. You well, what's not embarrassing of- is the new pick – of a combo of me and Luke Wilson to form the team Owen Wilson. I saw that online. There's there he is, right my party! <laughs> Look at your guy. All suited up, man. All suited up, looking good, feeling good. Oh, you- what a Monday night, Hayes. Oh, what a Monday night. Oh, it was. You know what? I was happy that I got a push because that inspires me, right? I start seeing the board, it gets it. It gets boring for you me. You hear right? that, O-Dog? He's happy with a push. That's right. I'm fine with a push. It's Dude, inspiring. this guy, do you know the meme of the of the the dumpster going down the street that's on fire? <laughs> that's him. <laughs> and I've seen the guy, whenever he's under the gun, he gets nervous and he tries to put blame elsewhere. Or th- He's like a GM that's just garbage. And they don't know what to say and they just make that. Ah, everything's fine. Everything's fine. You're in trouble. You're in big trouble. Big trouble. When um, when will you stop the bleeding, Hayes? Yes. Uh, tonight is probably the start. Oh, tonight's a tough game to call. I And I'm not it even is. just throwing out nonsense. Tonight is. is a very tough line. Luke, do you agree with this, okay? And yeah. I don't want to get too out of hand, but just hear the statement and, and react to it. I think there's an outside chance that the Giants fly out there and they actually stun the 49ers. Call me crazy. They might stun them. Go ahead. Extreme outside chance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Extreme outside chance. There's always a chance in this league. If I'm Brian Dable right now, I'm telling Danny Dimes, I'm saying, pick your first read. If it's not there, start running. I'm talking schoolyard <laughs> football. <laughs> Make things That's up. That's concerning to hear. Okay? Just because you're, you're outgunned across the board. Across the board, you're outgunned. You're outmatched. If I'm Brian Dable, the moment I get to the 50-yard line, I'm calling a flea flicker or a double reverse pass. Mm-hmm. Trick plays all around. Mm-hmm. And even that, I'm not sure it's enough. I, but I how just, does an owner, like if you're talking about being outmatched to that degree, like if you're the owner of the Giants and people in their organization are telling you that their organization's close, and then you hear a comment like that, like wouldn't you say, what the hell are we actually doing here? One thousand percent. And again, like you look at, and I know they had the good second half. It was against Arizona, which to me, you know, kind of negates how great it was. But it's like for three of, or sorry, for seven of or six of eight quarters played. Danny Dimes has looked atrocious. Granted, the two last quarters he played, he looked like the greatest quarterback to ever touch the NFL. But it's like defensively, they've been subpar. Saquon is now hurt. Their left tackles hurt. And the next thing is that their receiving core is not good. Yes, Darren Waller, tight end, is very elite. But after that, it's not like they have many guys that are like, hey, this is a playmaker. Like, I look at the Browns game. Deshaun Watson has been, you know, very poor. And you could see what he was doing. I'm not throwing the ball well, so I'm going to start tossing go balls. And Amari Cooper is that guy, one of the best 10, you know, receivers in the league. And he's making plays. Who's going to do that for the Giants? Nobody. No, well, that's why you needed Barkley, right? You needed Saquon. Basically, the game plan would have been either Saquon or Danny Dimes. They're going to try to run for first downs, and they're going to try to kick field goals, and that's still not going to be enough. Even with Barkley healthy, I think this line is maybe a 10 flat, possibly 9.5, but it's a 10.5-point spread. That's a big spread for a short week. Niners coming off an emotional win against a division rival in the Rams. Whoa. But – 
It's, you're not going to do it, are you? Well, do you want me to get out in front of this and just make the pick? Wow. You're going to make the pick, it, yeah. and we can respond to it. <laughs> I'm laying the point, so I'm taking the Niners all day. I think the Niners win by two or three touchdowns tonight. I think they're so much better than the Giants. I think everything you just said, three or four halves, the Giants have been pathetic. The one half they look good against, against the worst team in football in the Arizona Cardinals. I think McCaffrey runs all over this defense. Ayuk's not playing tonight. But they still have Kittle, who has not factored into the offense. I think he wakes up tonight. I think Debo plays a big role in that. And even with everything I just said about Brock Purdy, his efficiency, the Niners' offense, and how efficient they've been through two weeks, this Niner defense is so elite. And everything you just said about the Giants is accurate. I think Danny Dimes is going to be running for his life tonight. And I, I see this 31-10, 38-10, 38-17 Niners big. I'll lay the What's points. the spread? What's Ten the and spread? a half. Massive number, Noodles. Ooh. But to me, it says Vegas is begging you to say it's too big. I have to take the other team, right? Like I don't it, know. it screams saw... backdoor cover. <laughs> it does. But I saw the reaction on Luke Wilson's face. So like, I think he's happy about that. No, I, he's not. I am. No, I am. And I understand what you're saying, Hayes. But I'm going to flip the coin a little bit here. Do I think okay. the Niners will win tonight? Yes, I definitely do. But that being said, I'm Kyle Shanahan. Let's put our mind, pretend we're Kyle Shanahan for a sec. Mm -hmm. Christian McCaffrey played every single snap on Sunday. Last year, if you're Kyle Shanahan, you're probably thinking you're in the Super Bowl if your quarterback doesn't get hurt. Now you're on a short week, your best player in the team, McCaffrey. You know what I'm saying? Elijah Mitchell's getting at least 50% of the snaps today. Brandon sure. Ayuk's out. You think I'm going to sit here and be like, hey, it's a short week. Kittle, who's had injury issues as well in the past, I'm going to start feeding him? Absolutely not. I'm going to Ray Ray McLeod. I'm going to Juwan Jennings. I'm getting these guys on film. I'm going to sit here and experiment, tinker yep. a little bit, yep. do all of these things so that for two reasons. One, because I think we should win handedly. But then two, I put that on film for other D coordinators to look at. The reality, though, is when you go into a game where you're like, eh, I'm not going to play our best players. I might not focus on Debo. I'm going to, have, I'm going to make sure McCaffrey's well-rested. Now, all of a sudden, that 10.5 becomes 14 in the fourth quarter. Danny Dimes comes out with a minute and 35 seconds to play. Yep. Drives right down the field, and oh, we're FaceTiming you at 11.30 <laughs> Eastern because yeah. we got another cover. <laughs> and it's, we want to zero in on the underpants. That's exactly <laughs> what we want to do. I understand that. It, listen, anytime you get a big number like this, it screams back door. I, I understand what you're saying, and all of that is accurate. But here's what you left out. I think their defense probably supplies 10 points tonight, maybe 14. Oh. Nick Bosa's playing, okay, right? Fair. He may be on a snap count. Fred Warner's playing. Like, that defense is so electric, so dominant. It is, the Giants have it is but it's also the same defense them. with Matthew Stafford, and Danny Dimes is not Matthew Stafford. No, he's not. But Matthew Stafford has nothing around him right now. He's I know got they have that kid that no one's heard of before that all of a sudden's the the greatest wide receiver since Jerry Rice. Yeah, thanks to Matthew Stafford. Okay, you can't tell me that they haven't seen that. Maybe saw a few things that they can attack. No, and again, it's been a short week. Times. I think you're making a massive mistake, Hazy. Hey, a massive no. mistake. I have some <laughs> advice for your picks. I'm I have not. some advice for your picks because we need, you know, in the spirit of competition, we right. need this gap to tighten up a little That's bit. That's fine. Re so what I'm thinking is, whatever you pick in your head, pick the opposite, and then it'll it'll you know tighten down. You'll get a couple. Luke, let me wins. just ask I'm you not straight out. Psychology. Luke, we're straight up people, although we are just crushing Hazy B right now. <laughs> if this was our selection, let's just pretend you're making the pick tonight for us. Go ahead and make your selection for us. If this is our selection, I'm picking the Giants. Asinine. Wow. Just that, that's not just to win. Line. I just, I just want to say one more take. We're two eight and one. The, the two eight year one. Not to win. But again, <laughs> you you look at these. This is the NFL. Ten and a half points Big on a number. Thursday night. There's not Big the same number. prep. And I'm telling you, I could be wrong, but if I'm Kyle Shanahan, I am wrapping Christian McCaffrey in bubble wrap. This guy goes out. Let's say he plays the first half. We're up ten at the half. Maybe we're up seventeen. I'm looking at him and saying, you're getting two to three more snaps, if any. Mm -hmm. I am not Brock Purdy. Same thing. If we're up 17 at the half, who's our backup quarterback? Sam Darnold? They're not going to a okay. backup quarterback. No, but what half. I'm saying is we're I handing mean, the ball to uh, Elijah Mitchell. Bam, bam. Sure. Every time, the entire second half. I don't care if we get zero first downs. We're handing the ball off. We're getting out of this game healthy. 
And you know what that means? Danny Dimes, maybe a field goal, mm -hmm. maybe another field goal. The cover happens. I look like a genius. Yeah, I could listen. The backdoor cover's alive. Like, that's the only play here is a backdoor cover. Unless O's miracle comes to life that no one on earth actually thinks will happen. <laughs> and the Giants go out there and stun the world. Maybe they will. It's it's pro it would not shock me if it's a fourteen point game, seventeen point game, Giants ball, four minutes left, and I'm like, here we go again. But it also wouldn't shock me if the Niners elite defense stuffed Danny Dimes in a locker in that situation and they went four and out. School yard so, football, I'm telling you, wait till you we'll see it see. tonight. Danny Dimes will we'll look at his first read and say, Nope. I'm out of here. All right. That's like why I like the prop of him running kids. for – I like him running a ton of yards tonight. I'm all over that prop on FanDuel. I like – Danny Dimes might run for 50-plus tonight. It wouldn't shock me. Um, well, and the Niners are looking at the NFC right now. It's early. They played two games. But the Eagles are 2-0, and healthy, looking good. I guess their secondary is banged up. Cowboys 2-0, and but now big news. Trayvon yeah, Diggs, Diggs, ACL yeah. injury, out for the year. Like, how does that affect the Cowboys moving forward? It's not It's not great. You know, I, I still think the Cowboys are an elite team. I I don't think that there's, you know, it's time to panic if you're a Cowboy fan whatsoever. But it just kind of stings if you're a Cowboys guy because not only is he a good defender, but he is so great at taking the ball away, whether it's forced fumbles, interceptions. Mm -hmm. And the reality is this game, that's the biggest correlation when it comes to any stat you win the turnover margin I think it's something like Pete used to bring this in every single week like we get plus two in the turnovers we have an 89 percent chance of winning you know no doesn't matter this what happened else happens. to the Dallas doesn't this happen to Dallas it seems like it happens to them a lot uh, yes like, they were cooking a couple years ago and Dak went down it just seems like this is something that occurs often am I wrong with that Luke not at I, all this is crappy because I've actually said this year amongst other years because I'm usually so sick of the hype train and it's like it's they end up butchering it somehow. But I kind of was a believer. Maybe these guys are really good, and they are. But this seems to happen a lot. It's just tough luck, and it sucks. But, man. Yeah, Odog, you nailed no it. I jumped on. The, I was kind of on the same, like, is this the same old Cowboys team? Like, good, not great. After two weeks, seeing how that defense was playing, seeing how Micah Parsons was, you added Stephon Gilmore. Dan Quinn is clearly, you know, very comfortable calling plays out there. I'm like, this defense is second, you know, maybe to the Niners, but they're right up there. And I think Micah Parsons right now is the best defender in the NFL, defensive player. And then it's like, you look at the offense, and I know we all love to rag this guy, but like Mike McCarthy and Dak have seemingly been on the exact same page. This is the most... You know, They're cooking, man. Yeah, and I'd they, say it's the most cooking. comfortable Dak looks. Like the ball's coming out on time. It seems easy. That's it. You know, in that position, you know, you're really feeling good when it almost you make it look easy. When in the past, you never felt like that with Dak. So I'm like, holy right. smokes, this team's legit. And again, to have a guy like Trayvon Diggs out for the year, I'm not saying they're not a good team. I'm not even saying they still can't win the NFC. But it, it you can't replace somebody with that kind of skill. Well, that's you know where what I, I was going to go. Yeah, yeah go sorry ahead, to go. say. It, how is he replaced? Is it just by committee? Like, you know, what do you do when you have a significant injury like that, Luke? I think it's somewhat by committee. I'll tell you this. They're thrilled that they went out and got Stephon Gilmore in free agency. Mm -hmm. But, again, where my head goes here, Noodles, is beyond the covering, which they'll find someone else who's maybe not as good but can still cover fine. And they'll, you know, I'm sure they got guys in their practice squad and they're already working out DBs. But, like, I would... You know, this is somewhat of a hot take, but when it comes to DBs, like, tell me who else is in, as good at taking the ball away as this guy. Mm. Like, he just has a, right. a knack for being able to not only cover, but cause chaos, he's interceptions, fumbles. Like, he's, he's doing it. Well, you know what yeah. I think this does for Micah Parsons is open the door for him actually chasing an MVP because it's so tough for a defensive player to do it, especially in this era. Like, the numbers for quarterbacks are so crazy. Did Donald Unless do it one year, Hayes? I don't know if he's – I don't think we've had a defensive I know MVP. he was in the conversation that one year where he was off the charts. He was. I feel like J.J. Watt did one year. Why don't we look that up, Grappler? Because there have been a couple of recent examples, like Lawrence Taylor did, but that's over 30 years ago. I just feel like with, with you know, Parsons – playing the way he's playing, and now digs out. Like, if the Cowboys win the East, win 14 games, he ends up with, like, 20-plus sacks and is a beast, and the narrative is he did it without 
Diggs, you know, playing on the outside. That's going to boost his value and boost the narrative. I could see that picking up steam. Like, let's get Parsons an MVP here. I I don't disagree. You know, I disagree with most most of your picks, but the way <laughs> yeah. Micah Parsons is playing right now, stud. Uh, it's stud ridiculously good. And I mean, he's doing it in so many different ways. And the next thing I'll say about Micah is he's not just a pass rusher. You know, we would prep for DNs a lot where it's like, hey, this guy comes in on third down, he's rushing the, you know, QB, but like he doesn't want anything to really do with the run game. He's there to collect his millions by getting 18 sacks a season or whatever. Where it's like you watch Micah Parsons, I mean, they run at him and he's just the one play last week blows up the tight end, sheds him, makes the tackle, then strips the football. I'm like, this is ridiculous. It's stuff you see out of in high school games, you know, and he's doing the NFL. Hey, guy's a beast. Um, speaking of tight ends, you played the position. Are you rooting for Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift or what? Yeah. I mean, I I think it's hilarious. And I do find, like, <laughs> Travis and his brother, like, wildly entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, you know? If he can she's kind of, dusting him though. The way he's the way he's talking already. She's like, I'm. I can't have that nonsense in my life. Well, where like, is she? She's probably in South America right now or something. I, I, she's not I don't even know where her tour is. You gotta is. keep things on her. It's just the yeah. same as the thousand bucks, Luke. If you were dating somebody <laughs> high profile, <laughs> you keep it under wraps. I agree Although with in, that. in that environment, with with as famous as both of them, it's very difficult. But I would never be talking about her on a podcast. Or having exactly. anyone else talk about it because you know she's catching wind of that and being like, this guy's a pigeon, man, talking about me, begging <laughs> me to come to the stadium. Come on. Yeah, and, and to add to that, oh, dog, where I kind of go and is also like right now they're one and one outside of Patrick Mahomes. You know, he was obviously hurt week one, but their wide receiving core has looked not strong. It's like, when is he going to like cultivate this relationship? And that's the last thing you really want to add, you know, as far as media attention goes right now, is your one and one. The biggest question mark you have is not your defense, but it's actually the playmakers, not him, but the wide receiving core. And it's like now all of a sudden the shift is going to be on his dating life. And if I remember the days correctly, you know, there's not much time to do a ton of dating in an NFL season. Yeah. Did you ever throw a line out to somebody famous, Luke? I did, and I just, it was a flushing of catastrophic proportions. <laughs> <laughs> I never have. I, I never have. I kind of wish I have now so I could tell the story, but no. Well, yeah, you, was, it didn't yeah. go well? Shooters got to shoot, man. You got to take your yeah. shot. I just like, out of the Carolina hurricane thing, it just didn't, it didn't float back then. It was like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I play for the Canes, and it's just, I'm not kidding. It's flushing. It was, uh, it we, was porta potty <laughs> flushing. It was flushing. Yeah, I remember being in L.A., and it was a deep night, and we were at a club, and Carmen Electra walked by. We were upstairs at this, you know, VIP, and I was with a buddy who is retired. He's on TV on the other side, and he made a comment, and both of us were like, we are the biggest pigeons. She walked by, and we we're like, Look at you. Like, I can't remember what it was. Like, it was so, we were the two biggest losers. And right. she just looked at us and was like, how do you guys get into the VIP section? Right. Like, it was beyond, it was beyond embarrassing. The it last was, two guys in the VIP. Oh, it was, we were was just. At the yeah, height of we were, Carmen Electra. We you were got to play it cool, brothers. and if oh, you come yeah. up with some donkey line, they ex- you get exposed. Yeah. It's, like, it's like not prepping for a game, Luki. You 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 got to be ready in all circumstances. Hundred percent. You got to be ready. Sh- like uh, Hey said, shoot your shot. But like, mm-hmm. there's the pregame prep. You know, even if the game doesn't happen, you got to be ready to rumble. That's right. No, oh, that's right, man. You got to be ready. <laughs> that's Shooting your shots. Yeah, you got to yeah. do what you got to do, man. All right, buddy. Well, I'm on the Niners tonight. Minus. Ten and a half. It's a big number, but I think Levi Stadium will be rocking tonight, right? Bang One bang, and nine. Niners gang. They'll One be going and nine. Nuts. Yeah. Hey, Again. listen, I'm picking. I'm seeing the board all right. I, I picked How the winner. How can you say that? I what do you the, mean you picked a winner? I picked the winner in the Cowboy game. It was the same thing, a massive line. And then if it weren't for, for Derek Harvey and a bozo and the, the Saints deciding to throw Bryce Young a bone and allow him to at least cover a number at home, which was nice of them, with his parents in the stands, I'm I'm – you know, winning two in a row. I'm on a hot streak. Let's end this segment with one final thought, okay? If you could describe 
Hayes and company, that team, that organization with one word, which word would you use? Um, the thinking island there. Is it Atlantis? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just say I, it's the, the island is sunk, man. They're drowning over there. You know what I'm talking <laughs> ah, about? Atlantis. Atlantis. Yeah, the I, long lost I, island or whatever. And, and again, I, there's some history. I, I heard that. Atlantis used to be nice back in the day until Beautiful. everything's underwater now. It was a winner. Uh, I, it was a winner. <laughs> You're right. I, I was thinking if it was a sound, wouldn't it be the Sean Burke flush right now? But <laughs> oh, that means you can bound, bounce back. Luke, we had a, a guest on our show, a good buddy. O played. Uh, did you play with Berkey, Sean Burke? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I know Sean pretty well. And he tells a story. He was a coach at the time, and he was trying to get some privacy. So he went into the bathroom on the road, and he was standing by the toilet, but the automatic flush went off. So the flush came onto our show. And it rattled everybody. And he, he swears that he wasn't sitting on the toilet while he was talking it. to us. That's it. I'm not no one really it. believes it. The auto flush, come on. Dude. Now, I heard you guys chatting real quick about the uh, – I saw the golf video as well of the dude who peeled his tarp today yep. oh, and yeah. just started flexing. I'm not much of a golfer, but hypothetically in that situation, if you ran him over in your golf cart, are you the one who's at fault? Probably uh, you yes. might be able to claim self defense because the guy. Yeah, was, if he was aggressive, you know, he didn't really aggressive. move though. Like he took his shirt off, but he kind of just stood his ground like a lunatic. I don't think I'm that pretty would fly. sure a judge in the court of law would say, "I understand you might have felt threatened there." Yeah. Therefore, running him over with the golf cart is acceptable. Okay. Was one know. of the funniest clips I've seen in a long time. Though it's I'm like, sanity. I gotta start golfing. Yeah. If people are like that or at the course, I gotta. <laughs> I'd it's love crazy. to go out there and rumble a little bit. You get lunatics out there that are, and I, I don't know if the issue was that they hit into him or he had been too slow when they were snapping on him. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Look, Look at this guy. He wants action. <laughs> He's checking to see what do I'm dealing with here. Look at these right. arms. Look at this chest. Like he but wants yeah. to take his shirt off. He's looking for a confrontation. He By doesn't the way, care about that par. whole ordeal. Is over a golf ball, I believe. Him yes. picking yeah. up someone else's golf ball. That's right. Just move Imagine, on. Imagine like, what have we come to as a world where that's happening over a golf ball? Lunacy. Scary. Yep. Lunacy. There's no other way to put it. All right, buddy. Well, we'll catch you tonight on Sports Center on Jay's show, and we'll see uh, you on FaceTime, I'm sure, in about, I don't know, six hours. 10 now. 1 and 1, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll Back cover's coming. We'll catch you tomorrow with more picks. There he is, Luke Wilson of Team Owen Wilson. <laughs> Hayes and company on the Niners tonight. Lock it in. We love it. More on our best bets brought to you by FanDuel later this afternoon. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050, and on the TSN app. All right, the news is in on Vladdy Guerrero Jr. MRI results. Uh, no structural damage on his right knee. Just inflammation day-to-day, -day, not in the lineup tonight. But that's probably a win. If you're the Jays, that's a win, and we'll see if he's in the lineup yeah. this weekend against Tampa. Um, so Jays-Yankees. Tonight, you see Toronto FC got smoked last night. Messi barely played. He played like 35 minutes. Was out yeah, of there. They hurt. Don't nothing. They, like... got, they got dummied, and people were pouring out of that stadium. When Messi was coming off the pitch, people were like, <laughs> that's it. That's great. Like, couldn't care less about anyone else in that stadium but Leo Messi, which is a testament yeah. to his greatness and what he represents, but also a complete shot at the sporting event <laughs> in general. Like, yeah. We did not buy tickets to see Toronto FC play Inter Miami. We came to see one guy, and if he's not playing anymore, we will be leaving. That's and like a concert you go to, and you they you got one song you want to hear, and then you're done after that. It exactly. Doesn't matter when they play it, you're out. That's it. Right. <laughs> you gonna open with that song? Perfect. That makes my yeah, life easier. Perfect. I'm out of here. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so I'm here for the opening act. I couldn't care less yeah. about the headliner. So you're yeah. saying that people left when Messi said done for the night or when yes. it was for nothing no when he was not everyone but there is video in the stands when he is pulled from the game people are walking out like they're <laughs> he left gone. at like the 30 33rd minute or yes. like it was not even half time yet like no. he was gone and that was it yeah thanks for coming out you got to see him he floats around for a bit and then check please and he's banged up he's dealing with some some sort of injury um so who knows what this means for you know the rest of the season and his future there. Obviously, he's going to remain a member of Inter-Miami, and he'll play next year for sure. But I don't know if he'll be in the lineup the next time they're on the pitch. But even without him, it didn't matter. Toronto FC got dummied last night 4-0.
Um, Leafs back on the ice today. And I think this Nylander at center story is, is going to be the story of camp. And I think it's what, what a lot of people are curious about is there's a couple of different things. Where does Marner line up if Nylander's playing in the middle of the ice? As of day one of camp, he's with Matthews and Bertuzzi, which is a line that looks great, right? On paper, it's almost as if Keith is telling you he's trying to find the bunting Matthews Marner connection that was great for 40, 50 games a couple of years ago. Dude, that's 10 yeah. times better than that. Well, that, I, that, I, that particular line. I agree that Bertuzzi is a better player than bunting. Matthews and Marner are still the, effectively the same players they were same. a couple of years ago. Um, and I, I do think Brad Trey Living has factored into what is happening at camp, right? Like it's, it's been reported on. I believe Keith was speaking on it that Trey Living wanted to see Nylander play up the middle of the ice. I would not be shocked if during the sit down with Matthews and negotiations with Matthews, Matthews made it clear, like, I want to play with Mitch and I'd like to find another guy on the line that we can connect with and let us party, you know, and that's up to Sheldon to determine how long it's going to continue. And the way Keefe operates, it may change after a shift, you know, and mm-hmm. it's very likely lines will change at times throughout the season. But I wouldn't be I, – I would like to be a fly on the wall to see if Tra- – like, obviously, Dubas was cool with it, and it is Keefe's bench. But I wonder if Trey Living has a different philosophy and if there's any conversation with Keefe, like, stop messing around with that line. Leave them alone, even if they play poorly for a few games, and let them play. Who knows what's going to happen I, with the Lions, Hayes? Like, if you go down to the second line, John Tavares is playing. I like Tavares the third line play, better. The, John Tavares is playing with a kid who's got, what, seven games of playoff experience? Matthew Nice. And a guy has, yeah. who doesn't have very much finish. So we might be talking after five games saying, we kind of got to get John Tavares involved a little bit because they're not contributing offensively. For me, so, that third line is the second line. That's you should switch that up. So it's, well, that's Neil, let me explain it for people listening. So as of today, again, this is day one of camp. Tavares is with Nyes and Lafferty. Nylander up the middle of the ice with Max Domi and Callie Yarncroke. And Noodles, that sticks out more to you. I'm assuming yeah. because those two guys could skate and the, like Lafferty's a really good well, skater just, and Nyes yeah, is a big. Yeah, Jamie, kid you're and, right. Oh. That is a second line. That's the second line. I, I, I for me, if, if you're just starting, you know, today, I think. Domi and Nylander, Yarncroak is the second line, and Nice, Lafferty, and Tavares is the third line. Now, listen, you can have two second lines. And effectively, you've got top nine that you're looking at, but it just there's more trust until you know what Matthew Nice is as a player. I think we all believe what we think his ceiling is is a big strong winger no. good hands all of that if he excels no, i don't then- think there's anything wrong with saying they're just it's they're just better like they're just better and it's not like we're not trying to pull a punch at john tavares but maybe his role will somewhat change as far as five on five play and he'll still factor in in the power play but maybe he is that 3c guy who, who knows but I would guarantee you, if there was an important game tomorrow, and this is kind of something that they want to look into, that William Nylander line would be considered the second line and playing more. A little bit more trusted with with basically Yarn Croker. Just better. Just Lafferty. Better. If you circle, just look at that right side. Yarn Croker or Lafferty, who would you rather have? For me, it's Yarn Croak. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just what it is. I think Lafferty's a third, fourth liner. You know, he's getting a, a second line peak right now. And it's a first. Honestly, we're. You know, yelling and screaming. It's no, the first so, day of trading. No, okay, like, I'm not even worried about let, let this. Me, let me, let, let's focus this more, okay? Take out the wingers. Let, let's let's just assume Nylander and Tavares play 82 games at center. They both play 82 games in center. Regardless of second, third line, who their wingers are, who do you think will have a more productive season? Nylander or Tavares? I would say William Nylander. Even though he's playing out of position technically for the first time yes. at the NHL level. yes. Are, are, are you talking overall five-on-five yeah. five play? Five-on-five talk- five impact, points, goals, production, trust, de- defense, like the whole and line. And the question is who would be more productive? Yes. I would say William Nylander at this particular stage of the game. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like I, It's hard to sleep on John Tavares. The yeah. guy had 80 points last year. Oh, I, he is I, a professional point getter. And, there is and, no and, doubt about and, that. But but you know what he is too, is really detailed in his game. Where there's there's times where and again I know the Nylander crowd will get on me, but there's times where I think Willie takes lazy routes. I'm sorry, he takes routes where it's like okay, I'm on the backside, I'm going to lift a stick, 
Tavares does the other way. When you are a centerman and you have to play in your own zone, you got to do a lot of tough work, grunt work, down low, you know, body. That that's where and and Nylander is a strong player. He's a quick player. He can handle that. But I'd like to see him do it. It's easier said than done. And Tavares mm-hmm. puts that work in. And you know, he just it sometimes it looks ugly because he's not the the fastest player in the world, but he's very consistent. So I'm not gonna sleep on John Tavares because I know exactly the way he's gonna play night in and night out, where Willie, we talk about it. There's some inconsistencies in his game. So you might see a little bit more offensive flair from Willie, but there'll be some nights where you're like, Boy, that was a little turn away in the defensive zone that mm-hmm. I would like to see a, a close on that, right? What's so your answer, that's, noodles. My answer is that I, I trust Tavares more, but I just actually kind of – Nylander has more upside. Put it I, I'd say Tavares, though. <laughs> I, I would answer Tavares on this because I, I Tavares, this is what he's done his whole career. This is right. what he knows he is. He's He's been in a similar position going into camp the last two or three years. Right, He's not fleet of foot. He's never been fleet of foot. But – and he relies on his, his line mates, but I think Willie does too, right? Like Willie, Willie scored 40 last year. He had, I think, 87 points, predominantly yeah. playing with Matthews and, and Tavares. If they are not having access to Marner and or Matthews, then you're asking these guys to do a lot more on their own. I think Tavares would be more comfortable in that position because I think he's done it before in his career. I think Willie... Willie has all the talent in the world, the skating ability. He's a big guy, and he's a veteran. Like these, Watching these guys step on the ice today, it is so routine for them. It, they're going into their eighth season. Like There's a part of me that still thinks of them as kids. They're not. Matthews, no Marner, you're not, and Nylander. You're not tossing that around anymore. They are grizzled veterans. You, you guys were in your eighth season. Like I'm sure, oh, when you walked on the ice in Carolina in your eighth season, you were the man. Like You were, you were very comfortable. You knew every sur- – ounce of surroundings you knew what was expected you knew what the coach was all about what your line mates were about you knew that kids were looking up to you there was no veteran where you're like wow that guy's really old like you were older you were comfortable in who you are so Willie is I think in the perfect you know part of his career to take on something new because I, I don't think he'll be overwhelmed by the 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 opportunity but he may looked over overwhel- he may look overwhelmed in certain parts of it you know in certain moments and i would expect that where i don't think anything is overwhelming for john tavares yeah playing when you're talented of the players right. of the age of those players you mentioned the austin matthews mitch Barners, and Nylanders that have been around you're at the age where you're going into training camp and hayes i've brought this term up like skin in the game type stuff you're responsible for what goes on mm-hmm. do you know what i mean like you yeah your own play, how things are going, how things are run, keeping everybody in order, making sure the team is functioning and problems are solved. Like you are responsible for what goes on. Right. You're the right. best players. You're considered leaders. People look up to you. And it's not just the points and assist, it's everything. Like you, that's the only way I could put it. When you're in that age group and you're that talented and you're that type of player and you're getting paid like that. You are basically responsible for what's going on. That's yes. the way it it's works. your team. Exactly. Like That's there's right. no there's it's no more team. there's no Patrick Marlowe's here to no. help out. There's no Joe no, Thornton. There's anymore. no more oh maybe John Tavares has to have a meeting about us no. sucking for the last two weeks. It's over. It's like on that those stuff's guys. over. That's but right. it's their team. That's and, and they have to we talk about it. They're the ones getting paid. They're the ones that are shouldering all the responsibility here. You're right. There's no you know, father figure in the room. The Thorntons are gone. The Marlows are gone. The Spezzas are gone. They are the guys. Yep. They are, you know, you're not, I mean, you brought in Ryan Reeves, who's 35, but he's bringing a different dynamic. He's bringing some life to the room and he's bringing uh, some intimidation factor, which we've talked about. I still believe in, and I still believe on certain nights, he will factor into the game as far as their comfort level on the ice. But it is their team. There's no if they if they win or lose, it's going to be on the back of those yeah. players. Mm-hmm. And noodles, I'm quite confident that they're going to not cruise, but they're going to get through a regular season where they're comfortably into the playoffs. And it's their team again come springtime, because I've been around the block too much. I kind of know what goes on. They're getting in the playoffs. I just want to I want to see what happens in the spring. It is a journey to get there. And there's a lot of ups and downs and things you, and games you got to play, and we're going to analyze it to death. Poor play, excellent play, slumps, goaltending, all of it, because that's our jobs and we enjoy doing it. But come springtime is when I really want to see that's your team. What are you going to do with it? Yeah, and I, I think that's also you know 
this is an example of how comfortable they are in the regular season. The fact that they've showed up to camp and everyone's saying, you know, there's not a lot of noise. There's not a lot of distractions. Very businesslike, very routine. Because this is where they've been comfortable, right? Like, they, they need to shed the reputation of being a great regular season team. At some point, that becomes insulting. Right, that becomes something you don't want anymore. Seven years ago, that was uh, um, that was being highlighted. Right, that was a compliment yeah, when this was. team couldn't make the playoffs for basically 15 years. Seven years ago, if you said, "Man, you guys are an elite regular season team," people were parading in the streets. Right, that was a compliment. That was something you were pumping tires with. Now it is a backhanded compliment. Now it's obviously you're comfortable in the regular season. You got to be comfortable in the playoffs. Right, and we're not going to have that answer for quite some time. But that's why I'm not surprised to see these guys walking out there in great shape, smiling, having a blast, working hard, chuckling with the media. This is their comfort zone, exactly. Like they're <laughs> veterans, right? They're 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 going to have a great season. Like I I think if that line stays intact, Bertuzzi, Matthews, Marner, it should be one of the four or five best lines in the league. Like absolutely electric line that fans are going to love. Exactly. You and, got a guy that crashes and burns in the corner and gets the puck, has a finishing touch. Like he's, he, he's a good goal scorer. That's going to be a fantastic line. Yeah. I like, uh, just, just really good things about it. But we've been saying that for every year for the past several. It's well, just, and 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 guys, it's not guaranteed, but there might be a time like either you know Matthew Nice is going to learn on the job here, and you know he might be a guy that either excels up or excels down you know, given on his play and whether I wouldn't say that I don't think any young kid now that the game is over, too overwhelming for them guys that, that step in, they they've got the confidence to play, but can they do it? Remember it wasn't that long ago, Nick Robertson was flying around out there and you know, everyone was, you know, boasting him. This gets, you know, he's getting in that territory. He's got to do something right. Like mm-hmm. with his career, oh, like, yeah. you know, he's, he's a guy that's, I believe would be on the bubble to make the NHL or you, you start heading in that suspect territory. It's like, okay, is this guy going to be an AHL kind of call up that, for the organization? But I, I'm just talking about that top line. If, the, if there's chemistry there, you don't touch it, but there might be a scenario there where Bertuzzi's a better fit you know, with Nylander at some point and Nice goes up if, if he's very comfortable. And, sure. you know, Nice is a big body. He can separate the puck, too. We saw that. So, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see. There is some options. The left side, I think is, there's a lot of options. The right side, thinner if, if, if Nylander's going to play Willie, in the middle. If Nylander's playing up the middle of the ice. Yeah, if he's on the right yeah. side, then, then all of a sudden then, what, no, you're, you're the fine. center ice is where it gets thin. You know, and I yes. think that is really what this is about is that – They've locked in on camp. They're going to bring him back. Pontus Holmberg, I, I don't know what he is at the end of the level. He looked good at times last year, but he's a fourth-line option, right? He's not a guy that you're moving up the lineup. And, like, that's always a conversation around this team. Like, what if Matthews gets injured and misses 15, 20 games? What happens? What if Tavares misses 15, 20 games? What happens? Right. You can hide guys on the on the wing. You, you can't hide guys up the middle of the ice. You can't hide, you know, top pair defensemen. You can't hide goaltenders. Right, like right. that's the truth of the game. You can hide on the wing. You can't really hide anywhere else. Um, so they want options. And Willie, you know, Nylander's going to give them that. We'll see it, how it works out. Domi is capable of doing that. Lafferty's played up the middle of the ice at different points of his career. Um, yeah, you know, they they might have to kind of mix and match here, and we'll see what's going to happen as you get closer to the deadline. But you know, trades are going to happen if they're in a playoff spot. They're going to the playoffs feel good about their cup run chances. I, I would assume Trey Living has a similar philosophy to the one that Dubas has had the last handful of years. They'll be active, right? They'll yeah. try to make moves. You have to be. Yeah. You have to be. I, I'm I'm still intrigued to see how the net shakes out. Yeah, I know Samsonoff's the guy, Joseph Wall is, you know, the the goalie of the future, kind of the goalie that now Martin Jones seems to be a you know capable three. Does he get yeah, minutes? He played as pretty a two? well last year in Seattle, didn't he, he did. Jamie? He did, you know, and, and he had a great goalie coach out there in Steve Breer that, that helped settle his game down. And, you know, ultimately it's, it's you know, how that shakes out. Because, you know, Samson off regular season, really good, but, you know, he got injured, if, I think, once or twice, and then he wasn't available to the team at the most critical time, and that was in the playoffs. Joseph Wall was thrust into that role, and I thought he handled it well. But, again, it's it's – 
there's still that, okay, who's the guy who's going to be the number two and, and where's that trust factor if you, you know, regular season, not a problem like we talked about. You know, Samsonov had, I don't think he lost the game until Christmas or something at home. Wasn't it something ridiculous? Yeah, it was 19 crazy. 19 in a row. Or, yeah. but, but, you know, I still want to, it's more about how the minutes are going to shake down for me. Because Samsonov's not a 60-game starter. So is Wall going to play 30? Is, you know, Marty Jones going to get some games? Or how is that going to look? Because I believe Wall needs waivers. So I don't think that'll be a scenario where they want to you know, they won't lose that. Him. Yeah, I don't think they'll. Although, yeah. it, you know, I don't think it's a Garrett Sparks, Curtis McElhaney situation again. But, you know, it, it's somewhat similar. Like, Wall's played himself out of the American Hockey League. is ready to be an NHLer. And yeah. they're going to have to make a decision on that. And obviously, Dubas, if you were to look back on it, I'm sure he wishes he could make a different decision on that. But at the time, it was sound. Right, and it's similar here with Wall. Like you, you don't want to lose him on waivers, so you probably start the season with him and see how it plays out. Yeah. Um, Overdrive brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. We got our boy Jason Strudwick coming up. Struddy in twenty minutes. I, I, you know, lines are out there in Winnip or in Edmonton. You got McDavid playing with Connor Brown and Evander Kane. Who knows how long that will last? We got the Connor Hellebuck audio. We'll play that for you. We're working on Elias Lindholm audio in Calgary. Right, the two of them talking about the contractual situation. Willie Nylander was speaking on his today, so we'll get more into that with Strutty in about 20 minutes. Niners Giants tonight, Jays Yankees tonight. It's gonna be a great night of sports. So we'll tee up both throughout the afternoon. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. All right, Jason Strudwick will join us in about 15 minutes. We'll get to the Hellebuck audio. We'll get to the Lindholm audio. Talk about the Leafs on the ice today. Got the Jays at Yankee Stadium tonight looking for a sweep, you know, but the Jays are red hot. They've won five in a row, but Seattle's starting to win now. Texas winning now. Both those teams are off today. They're in action tomorrow against each other down in Texas. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. We're getting It's going to literally come down to the last, the last day yeah. of the season. Probably. Yep, more than likely. The last three or four games anyway. I mean, the Jays, there's a path here where – you know, if they if they take care of their own business, get in and feel good, and there's a chance Texas and or Seattle beat up on the opposition and maybe those teams fade, I doubt it. But it's more than likely going to come back down to the final few days of the season. And I, I credit baseball for setting it up this way, scheduling in September where you have interdivisional play where Seattle right. and Texas are going to play each other seven times yeah, the in the one final issue with that ten is games. Jay's going to Tampa, honestly – that's been a that's been a death trap down there. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I I hate that. Even if well, Tampa's wow. mailing anything in, or I don't know, they're they're still kind of fighting around for the division, aren't they? What are they doing? Yeah, they're they're within reach. They're two back of Baltimore, so they're they're in it absolutely for winning the division. Um, Baltimore's kind of taking their foot off the gas a little bit. I mean, Baltimore's at ninety five wins. Like they're, they're probably going to finish yeah. with 100 wins, which is an incredible season. It's just Tampa never dies, man. They never slow down. It doesn't matter <laughs> who they die. lose. They keep going. And you're right. I mean, it's one thing to punch a ticket, and you can't try to avoid certain teams. You just got to do your business, win ball games, get into the dance, and hope you win. But there's a real good chance if the Jays get in, they're going to play Tampa best two out of three at the trop. And Whew. listen – Take that for what it's worth, but also when they were getting swept by Texas, you'd probably sign up for that, right? Yeah. Like, so yeah, they, have three, six, they have three down there and then three up here with them? Yeah, they got six more against Tampa. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's that's a lot. It. It's a precursor. It's a lot. Yeah. You talk about interdivision games. Like, give me the Yankees six more times and the Red Sox four, and I uh, thank you very much. Well, that got, is yeah. what I would love. They got three at Tampa, three against the Yankees, three against Tampa. So they, they still they have, have Jerry. Yeah, they got Jerry Cole tonight, isn't it? Yes, Cole tonight and Cole likely next week as well. Yeah. So they're going to face Cole twice down the stretch. Yeah. Won't be easy. Wow. Yeah. Nope. Won't be. They'll easy. be fine though. But Barrios on the mound tonight, right? And Barrios been good. Like, and, and those Yankee bats are they're ice cold right now. Yeah, Barrios has bats. to do his job just like Gosman did last night because that kid that was pitching for the Yankees, he was dialed in. Outstanding. And Gosman had to hold up his end of the bargain, and he did. Yeah, he did. 10 Ks last night. New career high for him. 
Like he's striking out yeah. guys at a at a record pace. So uh, Gosman was great last night. Jays Yankees tonight. We'll keep teeing that up. Thursday nighter, week three of the NFL. We'll look ahead to that as well. Niners Giants and our boy Struddy coming up. His Danny take Dimes. on Panarin going Messier. Danny and his take Dimes. on the Leafs, the Oilers, <laughs> Hellebuck, Lindholm, and Calgary. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050, soon to be up on TSN 2.